Well, I'm going to start a little video on a, uh, removing a supporting wall, replacing it with a beam. But there's uh, what I consider to be three primary means of supporting a load-bearing wall that you remove. Um, I guess the one you see probably most often, most traditionally, is, is a beam that carries the weight of the ceiling joist uh, onto itself and then transferred onto cripple studs uh, and at a wall uh, on either side uh, to support that beam, that beam supporting uh, the roof structure, the ceiling joists, those kind of things. Then another type uh, is, is a beam that rides above the floor joists, uh, ceiling joists. If these are the ceiling joists, uh, basically this beam rides above them and then you have nailers that secure the ceiling joist to the beam holding up um, the ceiling joists and whatever roof structure that the ceiling joists are supporting. And then the kind we're going to build uh, for this particular project uh, is a hidden beam. But this hidden beam does not ride above the ceiling joists. Uh, rather, it rides uh, the ceiling joists ride on it. So basically, this will be our exterior wall, which will have a number of 2x4s uh, all together uh, underneath the top plate. And then our beam will be cut out to match our roof line. And then it will extend over onto another load-bearing wall, several feet onto that load-bearing wall, um, so that the load of these uh, the load of these ceiling joists is transferred onto this exterior wall and onto this internal load-bearing wall. And so this beam will go in here between the ceiling joists, we see the ceiling joists on either side, and we're going to use joist hangers to support these uh, ceiling joists against the beam. So that's the project we got going. And uh, I'll just kind of take you along as we go. Um, we're building our beam right now. Um, these beams are, uh, beams are quite costly to buy. This particular beam is 16 feet long, or will be 16 feet long. And originally it was going to be five and three quarter inches thick. Um, now this is not based on a structural engineering review. This is based on excess. Um, if you look at this beam, I got it sitting uh, here in this, this is a two by eight and a two by 12 covered in uh, wax paper, uh, just there so we could keep the beam relatively square and uh, form it up and shape it up and, and not have it stick to the wood with the glue that we're using, excess glue. But um, basically, um, this thing is significantly excessive for application. Um, look, if you're not, I would suggest everybody go get a proper civil engineering review um, before you go install a beam, take out a load bearing wall. In my case, I'll admit that I'm not doing that. Um, basically, we're building a beam to excess. Um, this beam is 11 and a half inches wide. It's 11 and a half inches wide only because it was a good number to get four strips out of a sheet of plywood. Um, and it's going to be six plies of plywood thick. Uh, so it's going to be uh, on the order of four and a half. This is three quarter plywood. It's going to be on the order of four and a half inches thick. And it's going to be quite excessive for what we're doing. In our application, this house, this, this room that we're working on uh, is a... Um, Oh, in other words, going to escape me. Uh, the structure of the roof line. It's a hip roof. Thank you. There it is. Hip roof. Um, and the nature of a hip roof is, is the primary loads are borne on the exterior walls. There's very few um, rafter jacks coming down. Um, hip roofs are, I don't say completely, but they're largely self-supported uh, because of their geometry. So realistically, this beam is really only carrying uh, the weight of the ceiling uh, with minimal weight from the roof. And again, this thing is going to be uh, five times six, 30 plies thick. Um, and it's gonna be four and a half inches thick, 11 and a half inches tall. It's excessive for what we need. Um, since I didn't go to a civil engineer, I made it excessive. Um, I am an engineer, but just not a civil. And, uh, you know, I, uh, so I can estimate reasonably well, and uh, this thing should be grossly excessive for this application. So 
Anyway, remember these few things about building a beam like this. Again, this is six plies of three quarter inch plywood, which each sheet of plywood is five plies in and of itself. So all in all, we're gonna have 30 plies. Now, the only useful thing about plies, or the most useful thing about plies, is that they, are, they have to be securely fastened together. If you go get a bunch of loose ply and don't have it well secured, uh, as homogeneous as possible, just as well put together as possible, um, then you're defeating the purpose of plies. Um, so glue, 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 lots of glue. I've got a paint tray and a paint roller and I roll on significant amounts of glue. Um, you know, the worst thing that happens is it oozes out the seams, um, but we can deal with that quite easily. And also, screws 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 lots of screws put the glue on put the plywood on and then screws all the way along uh, just to keep that homogeneity make that one mass um, and then also stagger your joints uh, here's an example here's uh, starting from this end there's a 16 foot beam right so at four foot here's a joint then there's an eight foot section running along and then another piece here that's four feet underneath that you have two pieces of eight foot uh, that meet here in the middle underneath that you have a piece of two foot a piece of eight foot and a piece of six foot stagger your stagger your seams as much as reasonably possible uh, to make this thing um, as strong as possible so um, we're going to put the last layer on this beam uh, this beam will be cut it's uh like I said, I'm producing, making it 16 feet. Um, the room that is going to, or the supporting wall is going to be removed is 16 feet long. Um, and I'm going to extend onto a load bearing wall. It'll be on the, the out, outer exterior wall on one side and it'll extend onto a load bearing wall. Uh, probably two to three feet. I'm not sure it'll go the full four foot. So we may end up with 16, 15, 14 foot of this actually being used. Uh, but that's okay. We need to you know, trim up the end a little bit on this end anyway. The other end's square. Uh, this end's not so square. So, um, anyway, that be that. I'm going to finish uh, finish putting on this top lamination. And uh, then we should be good. Let it cure. I'll uh, leave it just where it is to let it cure so it stays nice and flat and true. And then uh, probably sometime tomorrow, and I'll pick it up off of the off the forms here. Uh, these forms, the uh, two by eights, will be part of our uh, supporting wall. It'll be the the uh, top plate for our temporary supporting wall when we remove the the uh, other wall. And then these, this is a two by twelve down here uh, that I'll just put in my wood stock, and I'm sure I'll use it for something. So anyway, I'll get back to you whenever we start uh, ripping into the wall. Talk to you later. So the beam is done. Uh, 16 feet long. Listen, that last segment, I think I said that the load bearing wall we're removing 16 feet long. It's not, it's 12 feet long. Load bearing wall removes 12 feet long, so it'll extend from the exterior wall, which is one end of that load bearing wall, uh, over to some other load bearing wall, uh, another load bearing wall 12 foot away, and it'll extend out over that wall a few feet. Just depends on uh, clearances once we get up there, but uh, I think you can, hopefully you can see it's relatively straight. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of crown to it. It's pretty much pretty much flat and square within reason. It doesn't have to be beautiful uh, because it's not going to be exposed. Uh, it's going to be covered with sheetrock on its bottom side uh, once it's hidden up into the ceiling space. So anyway, just want to correct that. That's a 12 foot load bearing wall and we're going to extend out over another wall a couple of feet. So uh, anyway, beam's done. Uh, don't know when I'm going to get to start on the uh, taking out the load bearing wall. Hopefully soon. Um, but uh, I'll get back with you when we do. We'll call it part two. Talk to you later. Bye bye.